Good evening, YouTubers. T-Squared, T-Squared Talk. So, as promised, I'm going to be doing a full setup video on the Farm Innovators 4250. This is the new updated model. Um, there's been some changes to it compared to the old model, as I have set up over here. Um, so, we're going to get this out of the box, take a look at it, and get it all set up. Okay, so one thing to make note of right off the bat after I took it out of the box. Now, I already knew this about this product, um, but a lot of other incubators on the market do not come as with as many bonus features as this one does. Um, so this is the 42 model 4250. Um, but one of the things to take note of is as a bonus, they actually include the 3200 which is the actual motorized egg turner. This will prevent you from having to turn your eggs every four hours. Um, a lot of people say, oh, it ain't a big deal. I'll just go in and just rotate them a little bit. You know, getting up all the time, it is annoying to have to do that. Um, I, I, I speak really highly of it. I, I like not having to deal with it. At first, I couldn't even tell it was moving because it was going so slow, a very slow rotation. The reason you want to keep your eggs moving, you don't want the embryo to stick to the inner shell and and it will get stuck to it. And as it grows, it just basically it won't hatch because it will be stuck, it will become dead, and you will be without a chicken, which will lower your hatch rate. And you can find that out when you get into candling eggs, which we're going to be doing a video on very shortly. One of the other bonuses that they include is actually they add in a candler. It's a, 30, a model 3350. I'm going to open it up here and, and pull it out. So it's going to look just like this. Um, it's real easy to use. I'm planning on doing a couple videos very shortly. As you can see, I got eggs over here. So I've been candling them to make sure, but I'm actually going to do a couple how-to videos. So if you have this product, you can do it with me. Um, it also comes, if you've never done it and you haven't seen my video, the 3350 candler does also come with an instruction manual on how to do it. If you've never done it, it tells you what to look for. Um, so that's another great feature. Now, with that being said, the 3350 Candler does not have any additional modifications to it. And the 3200, which is your egg churner, that does not have any extra modifications either to it. But there are a lot of great features on the, 32, on the 4250, such as right off the bat... You've got a hard outer shell. Um, this basically, so if stuff hits it, it's not going to crack. As you can see over here with an older model, you've got a lot of styrofoam. It's something that they've had complaints on, um, having all that styrofoam. It's, it's not as secure. Um, with this hard plastic outer shell, it gives it more of a durable. So when you get it, you're getting a quality product. Um, you can look on, when you're looking for an incubator, that's an important thing. It makes it easier to clean, it protects it, it just gives it a better quality. Now, one of the other great features that was not listed in the manual, or it was also not listed um, on the box, that I find a great feature. We're going to open this up. I have both the old model of this and an even older one over here but what you may not have a hard time you may have a hard time seeing this because of my lighting in here they actually use a plastic basically bottom holder the old ones were of a metal you can see um, Basically, the reason I like the plastic better is it's not going to rust. Uh, I am down in South Texas um, where we do have, I mean, there's moisture in the air. There's also going to be a lot of humidity in here, a lot of moisture. These plastic ones are going to stay durable. They're going to last longer. Um, in some cases, I like metal better. In this case, um, where it is going to be exposed to more humidity in here, I really like the fact that it is plastic. The other great feature that they have added 
and I'll, I'll go into this more um, in the video on how to increase the humidity. Um, humidity controls have been a problem for a lot of people. Um, I'm actually working with one lady right now. She said that uh, she has a hard time keeping her humidity at the levels that they suggest in the book. Um, especially when you get to like day three and you have to up the humidity levels. It can be difficult because you've got to take everything out. You've got to take the eggs out. You've got to take the rotator out. You've got to add water in the tray on the old model. And I'm going to show you a video on how this is done with my old one as I'm about ready to do it in the next couple days. But with this one, it is super easy. They have uh, plugs on the side. You literally just pull the plug. As you can see, the plug's here. It's there. Once you pull the plug, you'll just use basically a turkey baster and you can feed water in here. It'll run all through the openings. The fact that there's two will basically, you'll keep one full at all times. But when you need to really raise your humidity on the last three days, you can inject on the opposite side. So just make sure you make note of number two will be towards the end. Number one, you'll keep full the whole time. Um, this is a really great product. I'm really excited to get this set up. Um, we're going to end up filling one tonight. I'm just going to fill it up with a water bottle um, because I have everything out. I'm also going to do a short video on how to fill these up at a later point. Now, during initial setup, you don't need to use the turkey baster. baster. You can just fill your water with a regular water bottle. And as you can see, it will automatically fill through all the chambers all the way around. You don't want to overfill it, and you want to keep this when you set this up on a nice level surface. Get this in here. And the reason you want to keep it on a level surface, I'm going to zoom. Let's see here how I can zoom over here. See these little holes? These little holes do go all the way through. And that's to make sure that someone don't overfill the water. Um, there have been instances where people just don't, never dealt with this, didn't really want to read the instructions, and they would just pour a gallon of water in here. Um, it's kind of funny, some of the stories that I hear. I read a ton about this product, and uh, so, I mean, you hear some stories. Um, but I'm going to get this filled up, and then I will be right back. Now, one thing to make note of, you don't want to overfill it. You want to make sure that it's on a level surface. You want to make sure um, you get this running for a little bit. Your humidity, don't put water on this side right off the bat. Um, if your humidity comes out a little low, you can always add. It's real simple. That, that's the important thing about these side holes. Um, it's super easy to add water, so don't, don't worry about trying to cram as much in there as you can on day one. Um, these actually slots are actually bigger, um, so they're going to hold more water, which means they'll make it a little bit longer probably. I'm curious to see. I'll know during this incubation process. Uh, I'll get a feel for it. Um, the old model I know starts going dry right around day 13. So if you have an old one that don't have these side holes, by day 13 you're going to have to add water or you're going to have zero humidity. Uh, mine's already starting to drop. It's been 11 days and I'm, I've been watching the number all day slowly dwindling. Now once you have your water set up, the next thing you're going to do, you're going to go ahead and you're going to put this screen in. The screen's just going to sit down at the bottom. There's an inner lip. That way it won't fall into the water. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to put your rotator in there. Now an important note, um, there is only one way to put the egg turner in here. Um, the 3200 model uh, egg turner, the motor will stick out a little bit past the, the actual egg set. So if you look around, you're going to see a cutout right there. That cutout is where that motor is going to sit. That's very important that you do it. If you don't do that, you're going to damage the styrofoam inside. Um, and also it could prevent you, one, you're going to have a hard time just getting it in there the wrong way. 
but as you can see how it just slides right in in that spot so I'm gonna get this all squared away in here and I'll be right back so as you can see it slides right in it fits in there nice and snug I try to get out of the light as best I can um, there's also a cutout on the side right here this is gonna make it so it's not keeping your incubator open a little bit you'll be able to put that right in there and it will seal it back up shut with the the lip that goes around as you can see right here so I'm gonna get the cover on I'm gonna get this plugged in I'm not gonna put the eggs in right off and I'll explain why once I get this plugged in So now, as you turn this on at first, you're gonna have your alarm light come on because your temperature is gonna be extremely low. Temperature right now is sitting at 75.5. Your humidity is at 54. It's pretty humid in my house anyway. Um, and it's building up humidity in there right now. Um, also, it's gonna be preset to 21 days, which is average hatch time for chickens. Um, if you need to change this, your days depending on what you're hatching um, you can go on farm innovators website and see hatch times for different uh, different types of birds uh, quail or other things they actually have a quail egg turner um, so but if you do need to change it it's really simple all you do is hit mode and you're gonna hold it down for a minute and then you'll see your temperature start flashing You'll then hit your mode again, and it will drop it over to days. And then from there, you can change your day setting either up or down. For me, I'm doing chicken, so I'm gonna leave it on 21. And then I'm gonna hit mode again, and it's gonna be set. Now, I do have to wait a little bit. It is recommended that you wait six to eight hours before putting any eggs in here. That's to get your humidity to stabilize out and get your temperature. To what it's supposed to be which is right around 99.5 um, I'm gonna give it a little bit for this video purposes I'm gonna put the eggs in right off and I'm gonna be monitoring it this evening uh, as I'm sitting here watching a movie I'll just keep checking it one of the things I love about this though is when the temperature drops too low or the humidity drops too low or the temperature goes too high or the temperature goes too low you'll have a in a warning indicator this red light will start to flash it's not an emergency don't think it's an emergency there is no exact exact science there is recommended numbers on what they think it should be um, I've had it drop for a few hours and the light will just come on and off and I mean Right now, I'm gonna switch over to my other one just for a minute. You can see my light is on right now. It's only at 99 and my humidity is 53. The light will come on, light will go back out. It's not an emergency. See, there it goes. It just went off on pretty much on cue. Um, it's not the end of the world. If it is start flashing, as you saw in the other one, it was a steady red, that's a warning. If you see it start flashing really fast like this, that's a, a little more serious indicator. Um, that means you wanna take a look at it, but a lot of times it will go and then it will go back to steady and then it will just go out. So it's not the end of the world. I mean, you could open a door in your house, get a draft. If your holes are open, these, these will open up to help you control humidity levels. These are the number one things. If you don't have the caps, like my older model, as you can see, I don't have the caps over here. I've lost them. I just have, I keep a card here, just a gift card. That way I can move it real quick. Um, I have tape on the other ones. I can pull the tape back, but I actually leave the tape on one because you're not gonna want them both opened up until you get to the last few days. And these other ones, um, as you can see over here, there are air circulation holes and these will lower and raise your humidity. Um, I keep mine on my old one taped up only because I've gotten better results. I've really been tweaking mine a lot. Um, I pay close attention to it because I wanted, I really want to hit a 42 out of 42. I've never had 40, all 42 eggs hatch. Um, there's a lot of tips and tricks on picking your eggs, um, getting the right eggs. I'm going to be doing a lot of videos on that here in the upcoming weeks. 
that way everybody can get better hatch rates and I really want to get my 42 out of 42 so it's for me it's just a personal challenge but with that being said I'm going to uh, take a break here for a few minutes until this gets up to temperature and then I will put the eggs in with you guys and walk you through it So I am still waiting for it to get up to uh, the right temperature. I'm at 92. It is going up fairly fast. It hasn't been more than 10 minutes. Um, one thing to note on the side, there's some uh, important instructions. They put it on the side because a lot of people are not going to read the instruction manual. Um, this is important. I did mention the six to eight hours. Um, also, uh, it says have your uh, incubator at room temperature. My house is actually set at 78, um, and I haven't had any problems. However, they recommend 65 to 72. Depending on your client climate, that may be a little more difficult for you. I don't know. Um, don't place it in direct sunlight. That is very important. Reason being, your direct sunlight will come through this front glass, the viewing glass and it will start heating it up and then your temperature will go up on top of that you have a heater in there um, that temperature in there will skyrocket make sure you plug it into a surge protector um, that's important if you have any kind of a power surge it will shoot voltage back into the equipment that's on anything if you have a tv um, any kind of electronics playstation any of that make sure you plug it into a surge protector um, that's very important and when you go to make temperature changes um, don't try to drastically change your temperature and humidity. A lot of times people will pump the water to it because it's low. Then they'll think they can fill both sides. Not really giving it time to adjust. Um, and inside there is a heating element. Be careful not to touch that. I did touch that early on and it does burn. So um, it gets pretty hot. So with that being said, we'll give it a few more minutes and let it get up to temperature. So as you can see, we did just hit 98 degrees, um, and you can see that the light is no longer flashing rapidly. It is just on. That is just the warning. The humidity is still a little bit low. I can add more water. It's easy with this model. I am going to wait until it gets around 99.5 to start putting in my eggs. As soon as I open this up, um, the cold air is going to rush in there, it's going to drop, and then my alarm will be rapidly. But I still want to make sure that it is going to stable out at what it's supposed to, um, at least for a little bit. But like I said, it is recommended that you do it for six to eight hours before putting in the eggs. Um, when you put in your eggs, an important note, I'll start explaining this while I'm waiting on that, is you want your pointier end. Some eggs are going to be more oval. But you're also going to have some eggs that are going to be pointy, smaller on the bottom or on one side, and larger, more rounded on the top side. It's important that you put the rounded, bigger end on the top so it will sit like this. Reason being when that chick, the chick starts growing inside, it's going to need all the room to kind of peck around. Its head's going to be on the top. So if you have it like this, a lot of times the head will start growing and then it will basically choke itself inside because it doesn't have enough room. Uh, some people, as it gets near hatching, they'll actually lay it down. Um, but you'll still have your head down here because it can't shift its head from over here all the way over to here. So make sure you put the small end down, large end up. That's extremely important. Um, also, I do wash my eggs. I just rinse them off, give them a quick rinse. That way they're not dirty. I don't scrub them. Um, I don't use soap. Um, I'll just do a quick rinse and that way they're nice and clean when I put them in. Um, the other thing to know, don't refrigerate your eggs. Some people say it ain't going to hurt nothing if you refrigerate them. I don't refrigerate my eggs. I have really good hatch rates. Um, people that have been following my channel know that. Don't wash your eggs. Uh, don't, don't put you refrigerate your eggs that's very important I I actually when I have some eggs here um, unfortunately I just sold five dozen to one of my neighbors and that pretty well wiped out my eggs 
so I don't really get prime pick on what I'm going to be putting in but that's okay because tomorrow morning when the eggs first come out I will be putting them them in the incubator. Now I've heard some stories about people um, trying to hatch eggs and they didn't even have a rooster. You have to have a rooster in order to hatch these eggs. Now you don't need roosters once you get your chickens um, and your roosters. You don't need a rooster to get eggs, but you do need a rooster to get fertile eggs. That is extremely important also. Um, you will not have any of them hatch. If you set up your incubator and you wait 21 days and you have zero hatch, I would almost bet you 100% that is the problem. Um, that humidity, huge humidity drops will cause some to not hatch, but it's not going to cause all of them to not hatch. So if you have zero, that's a guarantee that the person that you got your eggs from did not have a rooster. So I now have my alarm went out. I am at 99.5, which was what I was waiting for. My humidity is still a little low, but it's early on. So I'm going to get them in here, and this will start rotating them for the night. I'm going to monitor it. I'm also going to do an updated video probably uh, in a couple days, um, and then we'll go from there, and we'll continue showing you guys. So I'm going to open this up. We're going to start putting them in, and you guys can watch, and I'll show you guys after what it looks like. Okay, so I am wrapping up. I did put all the eggs that I have in here, um, that I had on hand in here. I still got six more spots that I'll be putting in. I've had some people say, oh, you can't write on the eggs. Um, unless you're injecting something into the eggs, there's no harm writing on eggs. We've actually named chickens before they even came out of their eggs where people would pick, friends would pick which one they thought was going to come out first. Um, we, we have a lot of fun with it. We'll name them, um, and we make a lot of fun out of this. So one of the other things I do tend to do, um, I do a lot of tests where I, I have a belief that, and, and this has been true for me since I've been testing it. I still keep testing it, um, that when the egg comes out of the hen, the actual days start counting down within that day right about. The reason I believe that is these eggs back here with the four on them, they've been out of the chick, they came out of the hen four days ago. These ones right here, four days ago. These two, these came out two days ago. And all these ones were picked up today, although they were over the course of the last two days, unfortunately. I don't have any way, so I just put one. I didn't put any more info. I also do um, try to predict males and females. I didn't do that on these front ones because they sat in the coop for a couple days because I wanted to get this set up going. There is a way that you, I believe you can tell. Some people say it's a wise tale. Some people say that it's it does work. Um, when you look at, I'm gonna use this one for instance. See how this egg is more pointed? You can see how it's more pointed. It's not really oval, oval. Well, now I'm gonna put it next to an oval egg. This one is more oval. I'm actually gonna move them down here on the table so you can get a good look at the difference. My camera might take a minute to focus. See the difference in the eggs? How one is more rounded on both the top and the bottom, and the other one is more pointy on one end. That means that the pointy one should be a rooster. The rounded one should be a hen. The reason I believe that to be true is at my one of my incubations, I actually put all rounded ones, and we only had two roosters come out. So I believe that to be the case. At this point, a lot of these are going to be sold off. Um, so I didn't really, it's not a huge deal what they are. I'm just hatching them. And me and my son will probably sell them off at the flea market once they hatch out. With that being said, please make sure you hit the like, the subscribe button. I apologize for this video going long. I wanted to put as much info into it as I could. Um, I'm also going to be doing a bunch of short videos um, with tips and tricks. Some of the stuff we covered, some of it I'll cover individually. Um, how to fill the incubator, a two minute video, how to spot male and female, two minute video. So 
I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up. I do these videos for you guys. The more you guys put thumbs up on this video, um, the more it gets shown on YouTube. And I really hope you enjoyed this. Please hit the like and the subscribe button. And I can't wait to see you guys again and hear your comments. You guys have a great one. Bye-bye.